destroyed! I'm losing to trash! We basically swept what was left in one of the cages and stuck all that garbage into a container, and now that's what they have to build with. This is gonna be awful. <laughs> If you are just joining us, this is the Junk Drawer Challenge where these creators have 40 minutes to build a robot to fight to the death in that cage in under 40 minutes. Robots can be eight pounds and they need to have an active weapon. Hi, my name is Bunny. I'm from San Jose and I built combat robotics for 21 years. My name is DJ and I have no combat robot experience. I build animatronics. I build peaceful robots to entertain people. So I'm Zachary Lytle. I've been fighting robots for the last 25 years. I've won eight gold medals at the World Robotics Tournament Robo Games, and I've won the giant bolt on the TV show BattleBots. Hi, I'm Jorvan Moss, also known as IJ, your favorite oddity. I build wearable robots in Robot Companions, so I'm more for robots that are friends, not violence. Over the next 40 minutes, we are going to need a drivetrain, we're going to need a power system, we're going to need a power distribution, we're going to need a weapon control system, and uh, some sort of chassis to tie everything together. Maybe a little bit of flair. Oh, I think flair's yeah. great. I'm yeah. great at flair. She's got a lot more flair than I do. I'm, I'm envious. When you only have 40 minutes to build and you have no idea what your materials are, you can't make a plan. I know that sounds crazy, but you have to just stick your hands in the junk drawer, see what comes up, no and then make your plan from there. Clear mine and let the parts tell me the story of the robot they want to build. This is going to be awful. <laughs> let the junk now. drawer battle begin! Run, 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 run! I see Ooh. a tank tread. You see tank treads? Oh, Those are big wheels. Competition started and we opened up the junk drawer and the first thing we did was start digging and everyone else kind of like grabbed things really fast but I kept digging and I found the actual tread body on the bottom so that's why I yanked up and I was just like oh this is perfect and that's halfway done. And that was we, the most valuable piece yeah. of the whole contest. <laughs> the first thing we need is to get all of our junk. We ran in, I grabbed wheels. Bonnie I, said the wheels I got were too big so I went back and got smaller wheels and she grabbed some motors. Actually are you good at soldering? Yeah I'm good at soldering. Jay has a great soldering technique, and he comes with his own built-in eye shields. Uh, all we have for soldering is that, but we, we're going to try to solder as little as possible. Oh, there was, there was connectors this whole time, a whole box yeah, they of connectors? Were, they were behind the, they were behind the You were hiding parts? No, I wasn't. I don't know. We didn't have connectors at the start of the build, so I spent a lot of time splicing and soldering wires. How are you so quiet? You had a plan. Yeah. <laughs> 20 malice stickers. Seems like you haven't together. discussed anything. Well, we're psychic. We have a whole thing. There's fire in their eyes. There's no fire. There's only fear. All right. Oh. You want another beam? No, just one. Okay. We're going to make this happy one, so we're going to mount it now, on this servo. Okay. And we're going to make this a tappy of zoo. Out of garbage. Right. We're, we're going to tap, tap them to death. Okay. That's what I'm best at. Right. That's no what way. I know how to do. Oh, yeah. Very experienced. I experienced it all. My entire plan was to let him take the charge and not just follow orders. We started with a plank of wood as our chassis, and that was kind of the foundation. We knew that our weapon system was going to be servo-based. Yeah. Bunny decided on a spike. A tappy. At For 21 years, I've built tappy robots. So this was I was that was what I love to build. Instinct. I love to build yeah servo robots. You know, come yeah, on, blue gun. You may be able to do both. Oh my god. Gaffer's tape. Uh, so this is the worst soldering. This is ugly. It's bad. As long as it's electrically good, uh, I guess that's all that matters. It's just going to be which robot actually turns on. <laughs> when I was trying to hot glue the robot together, I realized I had to get above the treads, so we just started gluing wood bricks inside the frame to get enough elevation. A good wedge wins 90% of robot fights, so getting that big slope on the front was a big key. Between movement, slope, and finally finding some way to attach something. Yeah. <laughs> so we need uh, four out the motor control uh, so there's only two motor controllers because they're dual these are dual brushless motor controllers. 
So, um, so two motors per. So we should do one. Um, I think we should do side, left and right side. Unless you think we should do front and back. Left and right. But let's okay. let's focus. I'm just gonna focus on two motors right now. Right. As we sat down, I was telling him how the electronic schematic needed to go. So it needed to go from the switch to the battery to the motor controllers to the motors and uh, out to the servo from there. Yeah. That we're going to see some sort of control box. Oh, we see the other hand. We see the other hand. Oh, maybe the, what they're going to do is build two hand-shaking robots, and then this is going to end very amicably. <laughs> I would be okay with that. Ajay is very happy with that outcome. I went really deep down my wedge rabbit hole, and then I remembered, oh, they said if you don't have a weapon, you're disqualified. What's the quickest, fastest weapon I could make? He grabbed the hand. That was not my plan. I, he went back for the hang. His original plan was the saw, but I was already soldering. And I was just like, I just trust his judgment. And he just came back with the hand. And I was just like, all right, we can work with that. So when I was trying to get the thing together, not having a hand drill and no method of making holes really hindered the entire build process. <laughs> I was coming to grips with, I only have zip ties and hot glue. <laughs> OK, no saw. No saw because I can't put a hole pattern to mount the blade to the motor. There's just no way it's coming. It's going to spin or not just fly off. <laughs> and once I came to grips with that, we just changed how everything went. Yeah. We're having an issue here. It doesn't fit the way I need it to. So I'm going to try to like, like so like. You can zip. We've got zip ties. We've got zip ties. Zip ties. Okay. I got a bag of zip ties. Right there. Right there. Right there. Cool. 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 Oh, this has to go like this. It has to. And I need this to go on top. Slow wedge it. Wedge is just a shape. No, wedges are not an active weapon. They said we had to have an active weapon. Oh, we had an active weapon. Oh, okay. This is, right. It might fall off, but it'll be active. All right. Uh, so I'm just duct tape the yeah. duct tape the motors yep, to yep. here. Yep. I didn't consider the width. So you're gonna have to do You have to do sideways. Oh, it's we not, have to do sideways. Okay, no trouble. That's why we have duct tape. Yeah. We're gonna do the best we can. Wait, is this boy? That's the that's our Bobby, tabby. We need no, no, we got it. Look, 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 Three minutes remaining. And the biggest problem we had was the transmitter versus the receiver. Right. That took so much time, and I don't use that control system. That is a completely independent control system. Right. I use Spectrum, and that's a fly sky. It's a totally right. different language. So at the end, we had to call in some expert that actually uses that specific language. So she figured out right away that we were putting too much power into sure. the receiver, yeah. and so we just needed to cut the power, and it was great. I have no idea how the controls work on it. Careful, that's not me. How do I stop it? Oh, there we go. What ended up happening is that we started working inside together, but then we had a controller that wasn't connecting correctly, and like one side was working, the other side wasn't working, and they're like, oh, maybe it's a solder connection. We forgot the solder connection was a problem, but we still couldn't get really perfect control of the two motors because the controller just wouldn't let us do it. So we're like, all right, we'll just go forward and pray that that's what this could work. That's exactly what the plan was at that point. All right, everyone, in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's your junk drawer challenge. All right, Rob, so what are we going to do? We're going to put these bots in for a test box, uh, you know, test, and then if there's a loose wire, if there's a battery that needs to get swapped out, we'll give them like 30 seconds or a minute for that, right? And then we're going to fight to the death. But I did see movement from Anjay and Zach's team. <laughs> what is going on in this? What is happening? <laughs> so what I've gathered is that the RC is actually working fine. The bot just has a little bit too much junk in the trunk. <laughs> That would be a good name for that robot. Junk in the trunk for Spink Tank. That way. Yeah. <laughs> What's um, happening here? We're taking it apart and putting it on a smaller one. Because it doesn't move at all. It's as small as humanly possible. And it is what it is. 
We got one. Oh no, we lost a wheel. We lost a wheel in a hectic tear down. We lost a drive. We just got the light one. Oh, okay, we're good. Okay, so we just gotta, it's not mixed. And that, uh, so mixing, hold on. That's break on load. Oh, it's break? Shoot. Let's just start taping everything because she's going to mix it so we can tape while she mixes. Okay. Turn it off while we do it and we'll have the switch right there. All right. I'll, I'll hold. I'll hold the tape. Okay. Hold. Where's the tape? Uh, we are making it smaller to try to get some movement in general. Like we might not be able to get any movement and we now no longer have a weapon. Some movement is better than no movement. Yeah. High five. High five. High five. Well done, Zach. Great job. The most important thing for a wedge robot is to make the wedge robot drive forward. These speed controllers we got out of the junk drawer do not properly work. And so we're only getting one direction. And if we're only going to get one direction, it's going to be forward. We have an update from Rob. Rob, are, what's the latest? We are ready for our load-in. We've got Odd J's team feeling cool and confident. Bunny and Mr. Volt also, uh, they did successfully make that swap. And in the, the, the unmarked corner, we've got Ryan Boxel's bot, Caldera. So Caldera is a perennial competitor here, and it is ready to destroy whoever gets in its way. Caldera is going to hang back for the beginning of the fight, and then once we think that the fight has kind of reached its natural conclusion, then we'll add in a little bit of chaos, a little bit of havoc, if you will. I don't believe in this robot either, but we love it. We love this robot. Oh, oh shit. And oh, it's waving to the audience. Yeah, that's so cute. Audience wave to Spank Tank. I, when I switched from the blade idea to the hand, I was like, oh god, what kind of weapon are they going to do? And I looked over, and I'm like, there's nothing together over there. <laughs> okay, maybe if our robot just moves, we're going to be good. <laughs> if we just pass the requirements, that might win the match. <laughs> All right, is everybody ready for a Junk Drawer Challenge? Junk Drawer Wars! In five, four, three, two, one. Fight, fight robots, robots, fight! Oh, wow, oh. Spank Tank firing out of his corner. Look at the speed. The blistering speed. The Look speed. at that box rush. Oh, oh I never oh. asked a panic. I think most of the ESCs that we have in the Junk Drawer Challenge actually are, are, are single directional. <laughs> Can I at least just rotate? No. And they are going after Caldera together. Fake Tank just oh. pinned Caldera! <laughs> Number three ranked by in the in the world in the three pound weight class! <laughs> trash! Team, team trash, trash! Team trash! Team trash! Team yeah. trash! Bart is coming in to save the day. Oh, no. He oh, wants to get in. inside of this box. I've never seen anything like it. Trash box, 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 trash box. But you know what? It was a great fight, wasn't it? And there was so much destruction. There was so much carnage. We did literally get clapped. A hand came down on us. Yeah, we got clapped. We literally got clapped. But the trash bots won. That's true. This is the greatest humiliation of my robot career. But it only gets better from here. <laughs> High five! Bias. <laughs> did it work as well as you expected? Uh, yes. yes! Yes, it did! 100%. Mine's still like in one piece. Right. <laughs> I think yours is always one piece. <laughs> it's only one piece. We managed to spank our opponent into submission. After he tore off one of our treads and jammed his weapon, and then we managed to get loose from the wall, pin him down, and then the vicious action began. We didn't want to kill her song. We're all friends with yeah. robots here. Wearable robots. We are trying to get them to uh, shake hands. This will always live in our hearts. Yeah. We will I'm remember. more of a pacifist, so I was kind of going more of a passive touch. I think the match ended way better than we expected because the trash bots won over everyone. That's true. The trash bots won. We were Tra victors in this. Trash bots. This is the face of victory. <laughs> Trash bots and friendship one. 